The Gina and Maddie podcast. I don't know if this is uh, like a big event in your calendar, uh, Gina, but the European Seagull Squawking Championships that happened in Belgium, is that something that you <laughs> keep yourself no, across? No, I hadn't heard of it, but do okay. tell. <laughs> well, uh, instead of me telling you about it, let's let's get a, our US news correspondent to tell us about it. Well, today's weather gives us hope. We are inching ever closer to the halcyon days of summertime, but we need not wait to hear one iconic sound of that season, albeit in this case, a man-made version. Yep, that there, the unmistakable sound of the seagull, as made by one woman competing for an unusual crown in Belgium this week. You are looking at the final round of the European <laughs> gold screeching competition. One of the winners crowned this time around, nine-year-old Cooper Wallace. And the crowd goes wild for nine-year-old Cooper Wallace in Belgium as part of the European Gull Screeching Championships. He said that his school friends thought it was annoying at first, but not now. I did it. He beat everyone with an impressive 92 points out of 100, the highest score in both the youth and the adult categories. Well, he's got a higher, littler voice as well. You'd think your kids would be able to get more realistic seagull sounds. Yeah, well, <laughs> well, I can't believe we're talking about realistic seagull sounds yeah, on the radio. The seagull calls, they're marked on their timber, rhythm and variation, oh. pointing out that seagulls sound different, varying on the situation. Let's have a little listen to Cooper okay. one more time. That's pretty good. It's amazing. Pretty good. Uh, Cooper decided he wanted to become Seagull Boy, just like how Peter Parker became Spider-Man after being bitten by the spider when he was nipped by the bird while eating a tuna sandwich at the beach. So Cooper was once nipped oh. by a seagull, and he thinks he's got seagull superpowers now. Uh, but it worked. He won himself the the prize there at the European Championships for gull screeching. Now, this is where you come in, Central Coast. He's okay, but I think there are better... I think there are better impersonations of seagulls oh. on the coast. I reckon there's someone listening right now that could call up and go, <laughs> seagull impersonation, I got Cooper covered, and give us their best seagull impersonation. <laughs> we host the Central Coast <laughs> inaugural seagull squawking competition on the radio right now, and the best seagull determined by you, Gina, okay. will score themselves a double pass to see the Knights take on the Warriors. <laughs> Right. People said this wouldn't work. People said this wouldn't work. <laughs> Producer Loz rolling her eyes going, no one is going to call and do a seagull impersonation. <laughs> Shane with a Y, our boss, he's like, what are you doing? There is not one person who will do a seagull impersonation. <laughs> Prove them wrong, Central Coast. Let's do it next. A nine-year-old British boy has won an international seagull screeching competition with his uncanny impression of the bird. It was happening in Belgium over the weekend. It happens every year. A whole bunch of people get together and try and make the sound of a seagull. This is him. <laughs> oh, the crowd loves it. It's pretty amazing. So we thought we would host. Yeah, we thought we would host the Central Coast's first ever yeah. Central <laughs> Seagull Maybe squawking. last. Well, we'll see how it goes <laughs> in that quarter past nine meeting that we're going to have. Uh, we've had the heats in the semi-finals off air. Producer Loz has put through everyone through their paces. Yeah. We've gotten to the grand final and our first competitor, it's Kurt versus Emily. Emily, you're up first. Hi, Em. Hi, hi. How are you? Good. Congratulations <laughs> on getting through to the grand final here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very excited. Oh, good. Have you been practising for long, Emily? <laughs> <laughs> I've always thought I was good at bird noises, but after hearing that one, I think my take on it's slightly different. Oh, so that's okay. I, it's I, an I, individual I, thing. Yeah, <laughs> nine-year-old overachiever <laughs> from Britain. All right, Emily, give us your seagull. Okay. Oh, was that it? We might need a little more. We might need a little more. Oh, unless you're doing a seagull choked on a chip, but we might need a little more. A little bit more. Oh. Okay. I, that that is the chip. That was it's a, the chip it, one. For a grand final, that was a little Maybe underwhelming. Maybe it was so high that we couldn't hear it. Should we go one more? Can we get Emily one more dogs on the Central Coast going <laughs> crazy right now. We missed it, Emily. Can you go one more time with your best seagull for us? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think your phone really cuts out sure. when it goes high. All right, Kurt. Uh, <laughs> gosh, I don't think you've got much competition. Uh, <laughs> See how you go, Kurt. How are you feeling about this, mate? Are you ready to become a seagull? Well, I've got to admit, when I first 
realise what I had to do. I kind of thought about doing a mole ray. Um, oh yeah, yeah. No, stuff. maybe not. Maybe not at seven fifty three. Okay. The... okay. <laughs> Give us your seagull, Kurt from Berkeley Vale. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's the what's the bird that does the caca? That's a different bird, oh, but gosh. I liked it. Look. Like by comparison to Emily's, yeah, I it think... was really good. Kurt, <laughs> you have been crowned the Central Coast's first ever seagull squawking champion. Anyone you want to thank, Kurt? Uh, I want to thank my mum for always driving me and you know pushing me to excel. Nah, thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Off to the footy, mate. Cheers, guys. Thank you. No dramas. <laughs> yeah, that might not be coming back. <laughs> Gina and Maddie. An Aussie TikToker by the name of Croc Turnbull <laughs> has gone viral online for his hilarious and completely true educational hmm. content in where he teaches Americans about the down under lifestyle, including how to guides on kangaroo riding. So you can imagine people are writing into him yep. asking for his advice. Have a listen to this. So I'm just replying to a comment here. Uh, thanks for the question, mate. It says, uh, I think I'm coming to Australia with my girlfriend. Uh, when I look online, it says there are big red kangaroos. Can you ride them? If so, can you rent them? Well, yeah, mate, we do have big red kangaroos. Uh, they're the largest of the macropod species. Uh, they're found out in central Australia, and yes, you can ride them. Um, the thing is, though, mate, uh, you've got to be an experienced rider to uh, to ride a big red. Uh, you do have to have your open roo licence. Amazing. <laughs> he goes on to talk a little more about the, the different style licences you get. Uh, we have three uh, sort of roo licences in Australia. You've got your learners, which you normally get around um, when you're a kid. Uh, then you go on your provisionals, which means you can only ride certain size kangaroos. Uh, these female... <laughs> Eastern Greys, they come under the uh, restricted or provisional, and the big red kangaroo. Well, that's a uh, that's an open. Amazing. <laughs> so there's something that's a bit fun about lying because because a lot of Americans who've never been to Australia, mm. they're so frightened of. We had a friend come out like years ago, and he was so nervous he couldn't sleep because he was worried a snake was going to bite him or he'd get bitten by a funnel web or whatever. So they're quite curious, and they, they will think that we've just got kangaroos hopping down yeah. the main street and stuff. And yeah, we got yeah, you can't yeah, embellish it a little bit. Hundred percent. Drop bears, hoop oh, snakes. Yeah, <laughs> drop bears are the best. <laughs> but someone else chimed in and, and just d- carried on with the lie for old mate. He goes, oh, yeah, yeah, of course you can. Me and my younger brothers used to ride them to school. It was only down the road a bit, so we didn't worry about any licences. <laughs> my youngest brother fit very easily in the pouch, wrote one Reddit user. And another one goes, if you've got your licence, sure. I've seen some horrific accidents from inexperienced people going off too fast on a red, though, mate. And be careful on a grey when trying to jump the dog fence. <laughs> <laughs> the Gina and Maddie Podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.